I'm already so this is decent with people news people all right so this video is without prejudice and or without recourse okay I'm gonna stand on the UCC 1-308 all rights reserved okay and uh, what you're gonna be hearing is from a YouTube channel and I'm gonna just spell it out because it's easier this way and it's a part two of my last video all right and it's capital D E P R O G R A M E D capital E N L I G H T E N E R again you understand why I'm spelling it out <laughs> alright uh, so this is kind of a follow up uh, the last video I did was well, kind of showing you like a little bit of the document but I want to kind of come through here this is a learning video uh, but it's not legal advice okay I'm not attorney neither is this video guy all right but uh, always always look straight forward <laughs> never never look straight forward always look around you be I uh, be able to protect yourself by any means necessary all right I've been up since 4 o'clock in the morning, and it's uh, right now around 2 o'clock in the morning, I guess. Or it feels like it anyway. Um, these codes he talks to you about. Write them down. Pull them up. Read them. Verify. Okay? Uh, these codes I've looked up in before. So, I, with first-hand knowledge believe of what he's saying okay however him and me is hearsay to y'all out there so always verify ask questions okay and uh, if it sounds like it can't be true well look it up especially if you got the little bit of information okay also uh, he don't call it out but I want you to also look up 18 USC uh, 911 okay and it may or may not say it's a felony to be a US citizen or claim to be a US citizen you guys look it up you verify it okay alright so let's go ahead and proceed forward y'all purposes on what you can do if your document is actually confused it refuse because to refuse your documents essentially is to deny you due process of law um and so without you getting your documents on the record how can you win why are you actually even going into a court um because you have nothing to say unless you uh, unless you put something on the record unless you're pressing the record the court will not be able to hear you so as a skillful um I, it really illegal uh, method they're refusing your documentations and so the one thing that should actually come to mind that if the documentations actually didn't have any value then they would simply submit them into the record but many of these um commercial the vast majority of these commercial courts they're refusing to accept your documents into the records because essentially you don't know how to handle the contract and essentially what it is it is a contract all of this is contract law the contract really is law and law is contract and so knowing thus, if you understand contract law, then you will most definitely be okay. And so the next thing I want to say, and I don't really have a lot of time, I don't intend to take a lot of time for this, is tune in Saturday, December the 7th at 12 noon, I'm actually going to be giving a webinar on how to properly set up a trust. Um, preferably, um, I prefer that you actually donate on cash app and you could donate on cash at cash dot me forward slash dollar sign times a dog 
Sure. So yeah, I mean, you, you, I mean, some people's actually already gotten their donations in. If you haven't gotten your donations in, I would highly encourage you to do so immediately. And in, in, in order for you to uh, attend this webinar, you need to donate at least 24 hours in advance. You can donate on um, PayPal, but I prefer the cash app um, to eliminate the charges. So with that being said, again, that's going to be Saturday, um, December the 7th at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Um, there should be a cash app link below this video. Um, I'll post it below this video after it's done. Um, it's going to be a webinar. It's only going to be a few hours on how to effectively set up a trust. And a trust could actually be very beneficial. So now let's get to um, the heart of this. What to do? All right. So before we get even further, this is an old video. Uh, so if you guys look up this information, it has been a, a little bit back. Okay. I don't remember when this was out, but uh, I just found him and all that, and I believe it was like 2016 when he was talking about this. But some of the stale stance is true in fact. So, uh, anyway, there you go. Oh, P.S., y'all. Uh, if you actually start looking up some of my older videos, I've talked about the uh, judges need to file... Uh, a foreign registration of 1930, 1938 Act, okay, and an Anti-Bribery Statement Act, okay. Um, it's actually Section 27. There's where they're supposed to really sign, and it gives the description. So it's actually really easy to find. An idiot like me found it real easy. I'm pretty sure some of y'all out there can find it real easy. All you have to do is just type in like what I said. Uh, Foreign Registration Act 1938 okay and it leads you to it and then go to their page and start reading the pages they're supposed to fill out it gives descriptions and I believe it was on uh, it was either line 7 or line 27 I cannot remember but it's been about three years since I looked it up anyway uh, the codes and statutes he's going to be given it's the reason why they had to fill this out, which they are not doing. Alright? So it's another thing, conflict of interest, that the courts are doing on the people. Alright. If your documents are refused, and how to be callable court in these no-oath judges. Now, what must a judge give up just the whole office. Does anyone in the room know? What must a judge give up just the whole office? Anthony? Um, Brother James, what must a judge give up just the whole office? According to Title 18, and you should be writing this down, 1481, Salakia, excuse me, Title 8. Okay. Just to let you guys know, this was actually a Zoom uh, video. USC 1481. Listen very well. Once it states, important in parts, Title 8, USC 1481 states, once an oath of office is taken, citizenship is relinquished. Once an oath of office is taken, citizenship is relinquished. So that means any any person holding public office has relinquished their citizenship. So once they take that oath, which is going to be to the United Nations, they are not even American citizens anymore. They become a foreign entity, an agency of the state. Now, let's deal with um, Pfizer information, right? 28 U.S.C. 1602. And notice that I'm giving you the codes where you could actually go and look this up again so you can verify it yourself. Go and check it out yourself. And I'm making it easy um, for you to go and check this out yourself, right? 
28 U.S.C. 1602 through 1611, right? And I'm not talking about the King James Bible. I'm talking about a U.S. code, 28 U.S.C. 1602 all the way through 1611 is the Foreign Sovereignty Immunity Act allows the jurisdiction of a court to be challenged and a demand of proper jurisdiction be stated. Many of you, you actually been going into the courts, you try to challenge jurisdiction, you get railroaded. Show them the law. 28 U.S.C. 1602 all the way to 1611. December 26, 1933, 49 statute, 3097. Through the series 881, conventional rights and duties states that Congress replaces statutes with international law, placing all states under international law. So that's one key thing right there, family. All the statutes across the United States are under international law, and the international law that they are under are the UCC code. And you're wondering why we're losing rights. Think about it, people. Why are they trying to impede on your Second Amendment, your First Amendment, all that? To all of you that think this stuff is a hoax, you're going to look these things up for yourself. December the 9th, 1945. International Organizations Immunities Act relinquished every public officer of the United States to the United Nations. Knowing thus, whoever is operating in the United States is a public office. They are bound to the United Nations. Anyone operating in the United States in a public office is bound to the United Nations. 22, and you should be writing these down. 22 CFR 92 point 12 to 92 31 i'll put that in the room for you if our heading foreign relations states that an oath is required to take office remember they relinquish citizenship with that so you have to take an oath just to get in public office donald trump nancy pelosi any judge any lawyer any Sharif, I don't care if you are a district attorney, uh, a sheriff, a judge, a clerk, a prosecuting attorney, any public office you're in, you must take an oath to obtain this office. For, so when these people tell you that they're not under oath, they are lying to you. They are lying to you. And may be guilty of fraud. Title VIII. USC, 1481. Should be writing this down, good brother Anthony. It'll help you get out of the situations that you're in. Should be writing this down. It's stated in such. Title 8, USC, 1481 state. Once an awful office is taken, citizenship is relinquished. So once they take public office, my good brother Loon, which is going to be to the United Nations, they are not even citizens anymore. They become foreign entities, agencies of the state. That means every public office is a foreign state, including all political subdivisions. Every single court is considered a separate foreign entity. So we're being brought into courtrooms and are being tried by a foreigner. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Now let's see what the USC codes have to say about this. Sit and think about that, y'all. Our officers are dressed up in military uniform. Is it possible? I'm not saying it's true and correct. Is it possible they are part of the UN? Uh, it's just a question, y'all. I'm not saying yay or nay. However, we do still have time to correct. The same. In Title 28, USC 3002, 
subsection 15A. It states that the United States is a federal corporation and not a governing, including the judicial procedures section. Did you hear that? So when you go into these courts, they're all corporations. It's all about commerce. Do you understand? So what that means, my good brother alone, is that we're not under state government rule. We're under federal corporation. And the federal corporation abides by the Constitution. Federal rules and civil procedures. Federal rules. I'm going to end it on this one just to kind of keep it short and sweet. I don't want, uh, I'm going to 